Hey class, and welcome to this week's screencast on transcription and translation. Many times we talk about transcription and translation as the central dogma of biology. But what I want you to think about is if you were to make a pizza, if you were to go into the kitchen and you got a cookbook out and you were the chef, you needed those ingredients and the oven to make the pizza, at, in our bodies, the cookbook is going to be our DNA. It's going to carry our instructions. And if you were to copy that recipe that you're using over to a recipe card, that would be your mRNA. You're copying something over. And what are we making? We're making a pizza. And that's going to be our final product in our protein. But in order to get to that pizza, you need those ingredients. And those ingredients for that protein are going to be your amino acids. Followed by, where are we making it? Well, we're making it in the cytoplasm at the ribosome. And that pizza is not going to be made very well if you do not have a ribosome. So, or if you do not have an oven. So we're gonna make that pizza in that oven which is going to be like our ribosome. So, DNA transcribes into RNA. It's just like writing things out and, a, and it's a little bit different. This happens inside the nucleus. So think about what type of cell this is happening in. If you said a eukaryote, you were right. Good job. RNA then translates into protein. So we're using kind of a different language like Spanish to French. And this happens in the cytoplasm at a ribosome. So those ribosomes are going to be all important because think about what makes you. Your phenotype, right? Well that phenotype is made up of all kinds of proteins. So those proteins are going to be all kinds of important to us. They actually make you. So, when we look at this, we see our central dogma of biology, and I want you to copy this directly into your notes. And we see our DNA, we see it being transcribed into RNA right here. And this is all happening within our nucleus. Very, very important. That nucleus is going to be very important. Now, the mRNA is what leaves the nucleus. And it travels down to our cytoplasm. And in that cytoplasm, we have a ribosome, this ribosome right here. And what's happening here is we are starting to read that mRNA. Reading of that mRNA is very, very important to us. Because then we're going to be able to start bringing in the parts of a protein. Do you remember what those parts of a protein are? Good. If you thought about amino acids, you were correct. So we're bringing those amino acids in with something called tRNA or transfer RNA. I'm not going to get directly into all of this now, but no, we're going to create our protein from this. And this is in our central dogma of biology. Now, you know that guy that we're reading all about in the double helix, James Watson? Well, he's the one who discovered this. After he discovered the structure of DNA, he worked more with DNA and he figured out all of our protein synthesis. So he's a pretty cool guy. Now, the genetic code is something very, very important for us. DNA is written using our nucleotides. I know we've gone over and over nucleotides and I know you know what is in a nucleotide, but those base pairs are ultra important for telling our cells exactly what to do. And that DNA is then copied into single-stranded RNA and we use those complementary base pairs. Remember, in DNA, A bonds with T and C bonds with G. But now in RNA, A is going to bond with U. That's very, very important. We no longer have our T. But when you're going from the DNA, you still have the T. So we're going to bond that with an A. And then our C and G are still the same. C is going to bond with G, and G will bond with C. 
Now, RNA is translated into our amino acids. That part that you're making of the pizza, using those ingredients. Well, our amino acids are our ingredients here for our proteins. And we have three RNA nucleotide base pairs. They make a codon. Codon, which will then be translated into an amino acid. The genetic code we have a total in this genetic code of 64 codons. We have 64 codons that we use. And 61 of those codons correspond to one of the 20 amino acids that we have. AUG. So you have an adenine, a uracil, and a guanine is the start codon. You must have this in order to start a sequence. We can't start reading anything if we do not have that AUG. So AUG is ultra important to us. We have three stop codons that, co that do not code for amino acid. So what those do, they tell our ribosome, oh, we're all done, we made our protein, we're good to go. So we have 61 codons that correspond to our amino acids, AUG is our start, and we have three stop codons within that genetic code. Now what's interesting is that this is universal among all life. It's not just you and me, it's your cat, it's your dog, it's your iguana if you have one. It's universal to everything that is living. So we've been talking about transcription and translation. What is transcription? It's the start of this process where we're going to make our proteins. We start with our DNA. So remember, that DNA is in the nucleus, and we have two strands of DNA. Now, what do we keep those in? What are they condensed into? If you said chromosomes, you would be correct. Now, that DNA <coughs> is wound tightly around proteins, and those are called histones. And if we unwind that, we're going to find our double helix. Now. We start with the two strands of DNA and we separate it into one. That one strand we call our template strand. And this we use as a pattern to produce an RNA chain. Remember those base pairs we just talked about? We're using them right here to create our RNA chain. And this is going to be very, very important when we get further on into this process. Since RNA does not have the base pair thymine, Remember that adenine will always pair with uracil. So instead of T, A pairs with U. So we have an enzyme here. We always have a new enzyme. RNA polymerase is our new enzyme, and that's going to help us make that RNA. So RNA polymerase is going to unwind that DNA. Remember, it's in that double helix form. So you then have your template strand. You can use this to make your new RNA strand. RNA polymerase then brings in all the base pairs that you will need in order to make that new strand. So look here. We start with our chromosome. Remember, it's a, the DNA is wound around those histone proteins. And we have this double helix down here. Now. We're then going to use that RNA polymerase right here, and it's going to then separate that DNA, and we're going to use that RNA polymerase to make that new RNA strand. All of this in the green here is that new RNA strand. So we have three types of RNA. mRNA is what we've been talking about. It takes the DNA message from the nucleus to the cytoplasm and ribosome. And this guy is going to play a very, very important role in transcription and translation. So he is made within the nucleus, then is able to leave the nucleus and go out to the cytoplasm and the ribosome. Then we have rRNA, and that associates with proteins to make ribosomes. So remember we talked about the nucleolus? We were talking about cells, and that was the site of our RNA production. Well, this is where we use this guy. We use him in our ribosomes. And our last type is tRNA, or transfer RNA. He brings the correct amino acid 
to the ribosome to match with its corresponding codon on the mRNA. And he, since he's bringing in those amino acids, he becomes very important to making these proteins as well. So now we're going to talk about the second part in protein production and protein synthesis. It's called translation. So we're translating, remember, from like a French to a German. We're using a different language here. And this occurs on the surface of our ribosomes, and that is within the cytoplasm. Ribosomes, remember, they have two subunits. They have a small subunit and they have a large subunit. And those subunits are composed of that ribosomal RNA that I just talked about and proteins. And ribosomal subunits come together during translation. They're not always together, but they will come together for that translation. Ribosomes contain a binding site for both mRNA and tRNA. So remember, that messenger RNA is coming out of the nucleus, is coming to the ribosome, and that ribosome has a point where we can bind to it with that mRNA. And then the tRNA is going to come in, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second. Okay, I want you to copy this figure into your notes, and I want you to have it as detailed as possible. This is translation. Now, remember I said that we have a codon that starts everything? That's our AUG. You see that AUG right in here. And we see all these guys that kind of look like a cross with... Um, base pairs attached to them and down here that's an amino acid. Now these guys are our tRNA. As our ribosome is reading this mRNA, that ribosome is saying, hey I need the, this protein or this amino acid to come in. And when that amino acid comes in, he has what is called an anticodon on him. He's going to pair up with the same pairing rules I gave you before. So A is going to bond with U and C is going to bond with G, but it will be the opposite pair that you had before. So that's important to note. So that tRNA has an anticodon, the opposite pair or codon from before. And he's also going to bring in our amino acids. So we see these amino acids. and He's going to add those amino acids onto our peptide chain. And remember, we bond these with a peptide bond. So translation process incorporates all the 20 amino acids depending on your genetic code. And, and we need to use this precise sequence. If anything is out of place, that's going to be a mutation. Now we're going to talk about mutations later this week in class. This is your screencast for now. Make sure you have all of the figures copied into your notes because we're going to talk about those later this week.